Hi, I'm Kent. If you've been following along my last couple of videos, you notice I've been making some new plaster molds for test tiles. I'm doing a few things in doing this. One is I want the test tiles overall so that I can start playing with some glazes. But while I'm doing that, I wanted to try a few different things. One is I wanted to try a different process for using my 3D printer to create the plaster molds. I made this mold here. I didn't account for the shrinkage and I forgot to put the little nubs on it so the plaster pieces didn't align. But I was able to get this mold for a test tile out. In the last video, I made this 3D printed piece. I made it bigger so I can account for shrinkage. I also put a little groove in the edge to try and help contain the plaster from leaking out. The groove didn't really work, um, but it did get bigger and I remember to put in some registration marks. That allowed me to create these two plaster molds. However, I've had a question for a while now about mixing up the plaster. Some of my earlier slip cast molds made from plaster, the plaster had a lot of bubbles in it, and I think my plaster consistency was too thick. I didn't have enough water in it. For these, I went to the opposite extreme. I put in a lot of water and it was very, very runny, which was great, it poured great. I picked up all the features. You can even see all the little layer lines in the 3D print. However, when I went to trim off the excess slip from the top, I actually was carving into the plaster. So this plaster is way too weak. So I've been thinking about this for a while and I think it's now time. I wanna do some tests varying the amount of plaster to water ratios, since I know that will impact the both density and strength of the plaster. The other thing I wanna do is vary the mixing amount. Reading through the data sheet for the plaster, it indicates that the amount of mixing will actually affect the strength as well. So let's go ahead and set that up and see if I can actually get to some conclusions about how much plaster and water to mix together. So what exactly do we want to test? So I mentioned data sheets for the plaster and so I've actually found two. So there's this one here, plasters and gypsum cement for the ceramics industry, and this other one, plaster mixing procedures. So I'm going off of these two. So one of the first things is you want cold water. So the setting time is based upon the temperature of the water. So if it's hot, it sets pretty quickly. If it's cold like it is today, it's, I don't know, 65, it will set more slowly. So that part I know, I'm not gonna worry about that. So going over to this data sheet, in here it says the water to plaster ratio, which is one of the variables I'm worried about, varying from 68 to 90 parts of water to plaster by weight, so measuring by weight that's good, governs the absorptive power of the mold. So depending upon how much plaster we have, the mold will suck in more or less water. Some parts of the mold require a higher water to plaster ratio than others, giving greater absorption to the select portions of the cast. So it's also saying that the more water there is, so closer to the 90 end, it will absorb more water. So that is one of the variables. So I think I'm going to test 70, 80, and 90 parts of water to plaster. And then going back to this data sheet, the other thing is around mixing time. So it says, along with the water plaster ratio, the final strength of the plaster cast is also determined by mixing. There's a direct relationship between energy input during the mixing and strength of development cast. And it talks about this figure down here. So basically this is the strength and the longer we mix it, the stronger it gets up to it looks like, you know, 11 and a half minutes or so. It also makes it set faster. So I'm gonna test mixing for four, seven and 10 minutes. So to kind of span the slope here. And then the last thing while we're here is soaking. So basically letting all the water absorb and it says the plaster is usually wetted after three to four minutes. So I'm also gonna make sure that the plaster gets properly soaked. So off camera, I'm going to weigh everything up and we will then start the test. Okay, I've got everything laid out here. So I've got a row for 70 grams of water, which I've measured out to 100 grams of plaster, that ratio. I'm actually doing three batches that have three columns. So this is actually 300 grams of plaster and 210 grams of water. And I just measured all that above my scale. Next row is for a ratio of 80 grams of water to 100 grams of plaster. So again, times three. So this is 240 to 300. And then finally, this is for 90 grams of water to 100 grams of plaster. So 270 to 300. When I mixed these up, I was actually a one to one ratio of water to plaster. So this was 100 to 100. So it would be down here somewhere out of frame. So the columns now are different mixing times. So four minutes of mixing, seven minutes of mixing, and 10 minutes of mixing. 
And this one, I didn't measure how much the mixing time is. So it's possible that maybe down here in this corner with a one-to-one -one ratio of plaster to water and a longer mixing time, this would be stronger. The closest I'm gonna get in this test is down here. So the thing I do is use my mixing attachment. Last time I did not use this because the plaster was so wet, it really didn't need it, or I didn't think it needed it. And I have one of my small tubs and I put a Ziploc bag in here so I don't have to clean it out and I'm just gonna mix inside of there. All right, so what's my plan of attack? I'm going to do these one row at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the water for one of the rows, put it into my tub. I will then put the plaster in to the tub and let it soak. I'll do that for three or four minutes. And then I'm gonna start mixing. I will mix for four minutes and then I will pour, uh, I think a hundred grams or so into the container. I'll mix for another three minutes, pour the next hundred grams and then mix for another three minutes and pour the last hundred grams. I'm guessing these might be a little bit short. So maybe I'll do a little bit less than hundred grams. So that way I will be able to mix, do all the mixing all at once and I won't have to do all, wait all of this time. I will do each row one by one. And with that, I think we're ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my mask so I can work with the plaster since it's all dusty, and then I will go through that procedure. Water first. And then slowly dump in the plaster. I'm gonna start my timer. All right, that's all the dust for the first one, so let that sit for another couple of minutes. Okay, so it says between three and four minutes, and we're at three and a half, so we'll call that good enough. And now we need to mix for four minutes. Okay, that is four minutes. Uh, 80, let's do 80. close enough. All right. So that is the 90 to 100 for four minutes. And we mix another three minutes. All right, that's seven minutes. Another three. All right, and that's 10. And we're starting to get thick. Definitely starting the set. That's not nearly as runny as it was. All right, I just reset everything, got a new plastic bag. We will do the 80 to 100 ratio now. Grab my mask again. Still got a nice pourable consistency. Definitely thicker. Still pretty liquid. It's hard to tell with such small volumes. Not definitely thicker. All right, so this one didn't make it. It is too thick. These others are setting. I think in general, I wanna try and skew this way. These ones that we're mixing for 10 minutes were starting to set up. 
I think I mixed this one uh, a little bit more rigorously, so it was setting a little bit more than I think the ones with the lower percentage of water. So we'll let these set. I will let them dry out and see if I can figure out how to make that happen a little bit faster, and then we will test them for strength. It's been a few days. These have all set up, and I've hopped them out of their molds. So let's take a look. So remember this one here we didn't do because it was too thick. This one has some defects. It has some bubbles from the bottom of the mold. So this one here, I'm going to say is no good. This one here has a bubble too. And then this one here has, does as well. And this one was starting to get thick. It is interesting to note that they picked up the detail in the bottom of this cup here. So there's like the recycle symbol and, and uh, like the size marker and all that stuff. So I'm getting good features. It just wound up having a bubble. So again, the other problem with this one was it's way too soft. So it's down here in the corner somewhere where it's a hundred to hundred ratio and I mixed it relatively little. So it would be off the frame. So let's do some tests to see how hard these are. All right. So let's go down to the 90 to hundred for four minutes. So this one should be the softest. I've already got a few tests in here. I was cheating. So I can take my plastic tool here, go back and forth, and I'm digging up the plaster. So it's definitely harder than the other one, but it's still getting marred up. So go down to the 90, 100, seven minutes. And again, same thing. Okay, let's try the 80s. So this one is the 80, 100 for four minutes. Yeah, it's pretty similar. 80, 100 for seven minutes. This one's getting harder. That one's definitely better. And the only one of the 70 100s that I kept is up here for four minutes. And this feels much more like my other ones. I can make a little bit of a mar in it, but not much. All right, so both of these 90 100s I was able to mar up relatively easily, so I would not rather not use those. Likewise, for the 80 100s, I can put some marks in those. And the only one left of the 7100 row is this one here that I mixed for four minutes. I can make some dents in it, but not much. And I don't have any bubbles, unlike this one here, where I've got a few defects in it. So I think we have a winner. I'm going to go with the ratio of 70 grams of water to 100 grams of plaster and mix it for four minutes. So I also just marked all these with my Sharpie. So this one was the 70 grams of water for four minutes. These are all the other combinations. I put an X on them to remember not to use them. I'm going to save these for now just in case. I want them for some reason, but this is the good one. Let's try out this new ratio. I'm going to recast my test tile. I've got this all prepped. I put the Murphy soap on it as a mold release. That's been working really well. And I got my favorite foil tape and used that to seal up all the seams. So that's good. And then I have a trash bag to put inside of my container. And the last thing to do is to mix it all together. So we've got the 70 grams of water to 100 grams of plaster, and now I need to mix it for four minutes after letting it slake for three and a half minutes. All right, that's four minutes. Go ahead and pour it in. All right, so I just pulled this one out of the mold. I cleaned it up a little bit using my putty knife while it was still pretty soft. It looks like it did pretty well. I have a couple of small little chip outs here, but I think that's just my 3D printed mold and the original artifacts I had in it. So I'm go ahead and let this cure all the way. Make sure that it's firm enough, unlike the last ones, which I've already tossed. And next time I have plaster out, I think I'll go ahead and make up another one so I have a set. I've got two plaster molds now that have cured. These have been drying for several days, so they are all dry. I think my plaster consistency is better now. Two has fit together just fine. I've got a rubber band, so let's go ahead and try to make another test tile. All 
All right, this is firmed up and I poured out the excess slip. So the problem I had last time was when I went to do this, I was digging up plaster and there isn't much extra clay on top, but I'm also not digging up plaster this time. Let's break it apart. There it is. Do a quick trim. Take off the sprue I used to pour. And there is the new test tile. Wipe down the molds and they should be good to go for the next time I slip cast. So these little test tiles have been a, a little bit of an adventure. However, they've been great for letting me practice. I've practiced both my mold making for my plaster and I was able to test here my plaster composition. I'm not sure this composition is the end state. Hopefully it works better than some of my previous attempts. I have a little bit more confidence now. With these skills in place, hopefully I can start making some more interesting pots. I can make some multi-part molds, have some confidence both in my mold making as well as in the plaster of the mold. I know there's a variety of recipes that go by volume. I really wanted one that goes by weight. Maybe I watched too much Alton Brown years ago when he was measuring flour by weight instead of volume. But it seems for like a dry powder like plaster, mass is the way to go. As always, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.